All right, today we're going to be dealing with something that a lot of you probably have to deal with in your shop, and that is carbon buildup. To demonstrate removing carbon buildup, I'm doing it on these intake valves. Not that you'd be reusing these in most cases, but if you are, or if you're trying to reuse your head, again, carbon buildup can be quite difficult to remove. Now, what I'm going to try on these three intake valves are three different processes. I want to demonstrate hydroblasting, dry soda blasting, and I also want to demonstrate glass beading in a vapor honing cabinet. I just wanna show you how we get three different levels of cleaning with our different processes. Let's get into it. Now again, first up, I'm going to be using a hydroblast. This thing is just high pressure water. A few things I wanna point out on this part, this is actually deposited onto the metal. So I could scrape this off potentially, but it is, it is quite ingrained into the metal. Now, as far as this oil goes up top, I can rub some of it off looks like it's exhaust burning. We're probably not going to be able to remove this in a hydroblast, but this is not exactly what a hydroblast is for. A hydroblast is really to take something that's very greasy and very grimy and quickly degrease it. It's not made to go past the surface level. So I'm curious to see if the hydroblast will even touch it at all. All right, so pretty much what I expected is kind of what we can see here. This stuff is far too ingrained into the surface for hydroblasting to actually be able to remove it. Remember, hydroblasting is just high pressure water. There's no aggregate in here, so it actually doesn't have anything to scrub the surface and remove this carbon buildup. It did do a better job on the bottom of the valve. As you can see, it, it does look a little lighter, but this, this top section, it's, uh, it's still quite dark and it did not do a good job of removing that carbon buildup. Now, one thing I can vouch for with the Hydroblast is the oil that was sitting on this valve is completely gone. This thing is perfectly clean when it comes to any sort of oil or deposits that were left on top of the part. But again, anything that's actually ingrained into the surface is still here. Up next, to remove this carbon buildup, I'm gonna be using the VH3500 Dry Soda Blast. Now, I do have much higher hopes for dry soda to actually be able to remove this carbon buildup. Now, one cool thing about soda blasting is, first of all, it's water and oil soluble. So if you are blasting with soda blast, you do not have to worry about media residual being left on your parts because if you rinse it off or if you put it back in service afterwards, the soda is just going to dilute and it's going to disappear. Another cool thing about dry soda is it does not damage the actual metal on the part. If you're blasting in a sandblasting machine with something like an aluminum oxide, you are definitely going to be roughening up the surface of that part. But again, soda, as soft as it is, does not actually damage the metal of the part. So soda actually did a surprisingly good job on the bottom portion of this valve here. You guys can see we're basically back to bare metal in some of these portions. On the top side of the valve, it did struggle a little bit more. Again, soda isn't necessarily an aggressive media at all. It actually explodes upon impact, making it a single use abrasive. So it's not designed to strip. So the fact that it's actually removing this carbon buildup is quite impressive. Again, all of the oil deposits that were at the top of this valve are completely gone. And it, again, it did a pretty good job of removing this carbon buildup. But up next, we're actually gonna throw one of these valves in a VH1000, I believe, with some glass bead and see if we can actually strip all of this carbon buildup off. So hopefully this is a pretty good demonstration of the three different levels of cleaning power that you get with a hydroblast, dry soda blasting, and then wet glass beading here on the end. Hydroblasting does not have any form of aggregate, meaning you only get high pressure water when you're cleaning. So it actually did struggle quite a bit with removing this carbon buildup. Again, one that did impress me actually was the dry soda blasting. Soda blasting is typically non-aggressive, but it was actually capable of removing quite a bit of this carbon buildup. And then again, here on the end, we have wet glass bead. This did a phenomenal job of bringing this back to the polish that you need. Again, glass bead is a circular abrasive, so it's not necessarily designed to cut, but it, it doesn't break down like soda does when it hits the surface, so it's actually able to scrub and continue scrubbing as it's carried across the part through the water, and that's what leaves you with this nice polished finish and no carbon buildup. With delicate parts or important engine components, we typically do not recommend 
using a dry machine unless you are looking to ultrasonic clean it or hand clean it very well afterwards. That's because you have to worry about media embedment. You do not have to worry about that with dry soda blast or with vapor honing. So again, these are very good options if you guys are looking to treat your internal engine components. If you guys have any questions regarding what you saw in this video today, or any questions about dry blasting, wet blasting, hydro blasting, automatic parts washing, truthfully, whatever it is, leave it in the comments below. We will make sure to get back to you guys. Also, if you have any video ideas, put them down there as well. If you guys are actually ready to get this equipment in your shop today, you can call us at 828-202-5563 or check out our website, vaporhoningtechnologies.com for all of our pricing and specifications. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Peace. This one numero uno by Vaporhoning Machine. Bye. Think that'll work?